flying high in a Georgia breeze, this green flag is the banner of one of the great sporting meccas of our time, the Augusta National Golf Club. Once a year in April, the world's greatest golfers drive down this famous old lane of magnolias, a hundred years high. They come by special invitation to play one of the nation's toughest and most historic courses, the Augusta National. Behind the scenes, green-coated members and golf officials from all over the nation hold last-minute meetings. Running the Masters is like a military operation, and for tournament chairman Cliff Roberts and his indispensable secretary, Ms. Helen Harris, checking last-minute problems is endless. The men in blue from the Pinkerton Agency receive their last briefing. Marshals who will control the gallery must be carefully instructed. And so must students from Augusta's Military Academy and from various colleges in the Southeast who will be operating the gallery ropes. And down by the pro shop, cover all the caddies beginning to gather. That means only one thing. The 1961 Masters Tournament is about to begin. Doug Ford tees off on the 400-yard par-4 first hole. Doug won the 1957 Masters. He beat Sam Snead by three strokes. That's Ken Venturi in the white cap, last year's runner-up. This is Ken's seventh appearance in the Masters. Gary Player tees off as it starts to rain. Gary is dressed in black for this opening round. He says black gives him strength. And he shows it. He's a very determined young pro, this South African, devoutly religious. He says he's going to win this tournament because the Lord wants him to win. 21-year-old Jack Nicklaus playing in his third Masters tournament. And here's the man they all have to beat, Arnold Palmer, the reigning champion. Arnie drives out a long one and helps it along with some body English. And Jimmy Demerit out early. He's in a bunker at the ninth hole. He's one of the two three times Masters champions. And now Gary Player comes in on 18. Another par for Player, and he finishes with a fine 69. Out in front, Arnold Palmer playing very fine golf today. And he tees off on 18. Arnold is now four under for the round. Here he uses his putter from the apron, strokes it up, up. It's short, but Arnie will get his par and finish with a fine 68, four under par, and a tie for the lead with Bob Rosberg. Genial Bob Rosberg also finished with a 68. He's out on the practice tee bright and early on the second day. Well, the second round gets underway, and Tommy Bolt drives a long one safely past the bunker on the right side of the fairway. 88 contestants move out onto the course, hoping that by day's end, they will have shot well enough to make the qualifying cutoff. Gary Player on the 15th makes a fine approach, and he'll have a chance for a birdie. Gary Player's first round 69 is just one stroke off the pace set by Palmer and Rossberg. Here he's going for a five-footer and gets it. he's on 16. This is a par 3. This is Augusta National's picture book hole. But one mistake here can mean a big splash and a costly penalty. Player putts for his par and begins to move up. At no other spectator sport is the gallery better dressed and more colorful than here at the Masters. The players, too, have an eye for fashion. They know a man does his best when he looks his best. Two-time Masters champion Byron Nelson, at 49, can still play inspired golf when he gets to Augusta. He's paired with Charlie Coe this round. Coe won the U.S. Amateur Championship twice. He's been low amateur in three of the 11 Masters tournaments he's played. And he gets his par here on 17. Arnold Palmer's on 15. His caddy, the famous Iron Man, has caddied Arnie to both his Masters win. Palmer's playing three. And he makes a very fine approach. Now on 16, he goes for a birdie. Keep your eye on Iron Man sitting by that bunker. Browns hurry over to 17, where Gary Player relentlessly continues the pressure. 
Palmer and Player starting to emerge as the men to beat in this tournament, and it could wind up as a head-to-head -head battle. Oh, Player just misses a birdie. That one really hurt. Swarming across the course, spectators follow Player over to 18. Gary's approach shot was off the green to the right. He's one stroke behind Arnold Palmer, going for his third shot. It's a long, rolling 25-footer. Fantastic shot. He cut it at the end of the hole. A birdie here on 18. And at the end of the second round, Gary Player and Arnold Palmer are tied. Each of them seven under par. Well, Saturday's third round sees two all-time greats paired together, Samuel Jackson Sneed and the inimitable Ben Hogan. And there's plenty of life in the old-timers yet. Here Sam drops a beautiful putt on 16 to prove it. This was the first of three straight birdies for Sneed. Arnold Palmer is in trouble on the 13th. His lie in the creek is unplayable, and a rules decision must be made. Yes, the committee tells Arnie he will have to drop another ball, taking a penalty. And Arnie's a little ruffled. He hasn't been playing as well today as he would like to have. His approach is wild, and this will cost him a bogey at 13. But he had to scramble again on 15, and his approach shot goes into the crowd. Quickly, the word spreads through the gallery. Gary Player has shot a sizzling 32, four under par on the front nine, and he is now four strokes ahead of Palmer. And the fourth day of the Masters Tournament, windy, wet, and miserable. But as the rains continue and the winds blow, the course becomes unplayable. And the end comes when officials can no longer pull out the flagstick from the cup at number 10. Play is halted. The day's scores are washed away with the rain. As if to order, Monday dawns bright and clear. And a record-breaking crowd for the day turns out to witness the restaging of the Masters' final duel. On the second hole, Arnie lies two in the bunker on this long par five. Out of the bunker, he hits it up, up, almost to the flag. Well, he gets his birdie here, and now he's five strokes behind. Player is on the fifth, trying to save his par. He lies two off the green. Here's his chip, up, up, but it's short. And Player gets his par. On the par three sixth hole, Gary's tee shot landed on the upper level. It leaves a long, tricky shot across this enormous, heavily contoured green. Ball is rolling down, down. It's going to make it, make it up, but not quite. A very oh. fine putt. And Player gladly settles for a par on this sixth hole. This leaves him still 12 under at the end of six holes. Palmer, seven under at the end of three. For Charlie Coe, Palmer's on number four. This is the par three hole. Coe hits it. Up. An incredible drive. It stops inches away from the pin. A really spectacular shot by this amateur. And now Arnold Palmer sizes up the situation. He was short. He's in the bunker in the front of the green. Going to look this one over very carefully. About ready, up out of the bunker. A beautiful shot, up high and close to the cup. But Palmer's not taking any chances. These short ones can be missed too. He knows it. And he strokes in the one footer and saves his par here on the fourth hole. Well, the crowds are on the move, running back and forth between the two favorites. Gary Player on number seven, missed the green on his approach shot. He's going to chip it down, takes one last reading of this deceptive green. Chips it, 
Runs, runs, and he's about two feet short. But Flair gets his par. Palmer's approaching the par four fifth hole. He's wide and to the left. And he's going to try a putter here. Wants to roll the ball up close as he can. Here it comes. Rolling up, up. Not quite. And Charlie Cole holds out for his par. And so does Arnold. They're on the sixth tee now. Palmer hits his tee shot. And it's a beautiful shot right on the green. Almost a hole in one. Arnie's ball comes to rest a little more than six inches away from the cup. He takes that slightly knock kneed putting stance and taps it in for a birdie. So the situation now, Gary Player is 12 under par and Palmer is eight under, still four strokes behind. Well, Player made the turn at the ninth hole with a two under par, 34. His approach arrow number 10 is wide to the left behind the pin. Wants to make sure he has a clear shot at the ball. He knows he needs a par here. This 10th hole is a tough hole. He's going to try to save it by chipping close. Here's the chip, but it's short, way short. He's left himself a difficult six, seven foot putt. This is the first hole today that's really given Gary much trouble. Here's his putt. Ooh, and he misses to the left. Gary Player takes his first bogey for this final round, and he loses a stroke to Arnold Palmer, hero number 10. And still the crowds grow. It's a record gallery today. They're moving over to the eighth hole, where Arnold Palmer, still three strokes behind Player, is smoking up a storm as he deliberates a difficult, long putt. This putt could give him an eagle, an eagle three on the eighth. He put together two big shots on this long uphill par five hole, reaching the green in two. He's ready. Curled up in that well-known question mark stance and... Rolled past the pin. But he leaves himself a two-footer, sinks this for a birdie, and Palmer has picked up another stroke on Gary Player. And now Palmer moves on to the tenth hole, another long one. He's putting uphill for a birdie. He's strong and one foot past the hole, but he gets his par. <laughs> on number 11, Palmer's tee shot was up the middle but his approach missed the green and landed on the edge. Now Arnie lines it up. Using a putter and strokes the ball up, up, up. Bang, misses. Charlie Cole was on in two. He missed his first putt, but he gets his par. Now here's Arnie going for his and gets it. Gary Player, almost unbelievably, has taken a double bogey seven on the 13th hole. This leaves him nine under par for the tournament. Arnold Palmer has caught Gary Player. They are tied up at nine under each. And here's Gary Player on 15. Playing cautiously, his approach has fallen short of the green. He needs a birdie badly on this hole. Paul Harney, two under for the tournament, stands by. And Gary's going to use a pitching wedge. He lies three. Pitches it up, and it's past the hole by about two feet. So Gary now has this two-footer for his par five. He's over it. Oh, rims the cup, and it's out. And player gets a bogey. He has lost the lead in the Masters Golf Tournament. Arnold Palmer now leads by one stroke. From a 12 under par, six stroke lead after two holes this morning, Gary Player has slipped to eight under and disaster. He's a mighty unhappy man as he comes up on 16. He hit it strong and he lies high on the back edge. Player asks for some distracting paper to be removed. He doesn't want anything to break his concentration on this putt. Up to now, he has been the man to beat in this tournament. But now the tables are turned. Player addresses the putt. Misses by 
about six inches. Arnold Palmer, who has just taken over the lead from Gary Player, is about to tee off on the 12th hole. Arnie hits an iron. It's lost in the shadows. He can't see it, but it's in the rough on the backside. But he'll be able to chip out of there for one putt and a par three. Meanwhile, Gary Player moves on to the 18th. And around the last hole, huge crowds are waiting to watch the dramatic enactment of final play. Gary Player is approaching. He had looked like a sure winner for so much of this day, but now his supporter spirits are low in defeat. And Player is in trouble again. His approach shot is going into the bunker to the right of the green. As he walks up, Player gets a great hand from the crowd. He's a disheartened young man right now. He turned the front nine in a fine two under par 34. But the course caught up with him on the back nine. A bogey on 10, a double bogey on 13, and a bogey on 15. Have, he is sure, robbed him of his master's prize. Gary now coming out of the bunker. Up, up, oh, very fine. It's on the green, about three feet short. And he gets his par here on 18. So he has a final score of 280. That's eight under par for the 72 holes, his score for the Masters. The whole crowd is behind Arnie now, jamming the greens and the fairways for as far as the eye can see. And playing superb golf right alongside Palmer, amateur Charlie Coe is with him all the way. Coe picked up birdies on 13 and 14, and he is now six under par. Palmer studies the green, watches the grass grow. His caddy Iron Man goes out to the pen. And Arnie, with that knock kneed stance, settles down, strokes it. it. Ooh, a very close miss. But Palmer must settle for his par here on 15. All he needs now to win the 1961 Masters Tournament is to par the last three holes. Now here's Charlie Coe. Coe lying two, tries this shot for an eagle. Ooh, it rims the cup. But Charlie Coe gets his birdie, and that's his third in a row, and he's now seven under par. Here the 16th green, a roaring welcome for the American Arnold Palmer, who looks as though he's about to make golfing history. Palmer gets his par. He has two more holes to go. And now they're on 17. Charlie Coe, a brilliant seven under for the tournament, tries a putt for a birdie. Short and to the right. Notice he carefully steps over Arnie's line, taps in the little six-incher for his par. So Coe gets his par on 17. Palmer lines his up, still taking his time. This boy's nerves are made of steel. He never plays better than when under pressure. All he needs here is a 10-footer. He sank a 30-footer on the same hole last year to go on and win. didn't take the lesson that Charlie Coe gave him. Both men had identical putts. Now Arnie taps his end for his par. One hole to go. The tension mounts. The 18th tee, the last hole, the hole that means so much. Tournaments have been won or lost on this hole. And now all Arnie has to do is to play it in par. Just four strokes. A little hook on that ball, and he's in good position for his approach. Arnold Palmer, the favorite, is coming home, bringing the gallery with him. Seldom has a player been more popular or drawn larger crowds. And right now, every heart seems to be with Arnie's as he comes in for the kill.
Homer hits his approach. A seven iron shot and he's off to the right. He catches the bunker. The same one Gary Player found an hour ago. The gallery rushes in to get a better view. Disaster has struck the great and popular champion. Will he be able to recover? Well, that's what they all want to know. Never before have so many spectators concentrated their attention on one player. Palmer facing a troublesome sand shot. You can see it partly buried. He blasts out. It bounces. Oh, no, it's way, way wide and too strong. It's in the gallery over the green. Unbelievably, Palmer, the coolest player in the business, has blown it on this last hole. Stunned, he walks over but can't bear to look. Arnold Palmer is shaken with disbelief. Charlie Coe, a member here, tries this birdie putt for a 280 that would tie Gary Player, but he misses. 281 for Coe. Palmer, still not on the green, lies three. He has to make this difficult shot to win. He runs it up. It's strong. Arnold Palmer with victory at his grasp now has only a chance for a tie and a playoff tomorrow. He's 12 feet past the pin, and he'll have to make this bogey to tie with Gary Player. Arnie Shattered lines it up. It, and it's all over. It's all over. Gary Player is the winner. A sensational blow up on the last hole cost champion Arnold Palmer a history making victory that seemed almost sure. He ties with partner Charlie Cole for a second place finish at 281. One of the most dramatic finishes ever has left the crowd stunned with disbelief. But nobody is more surprised than winner Gary Player, the first foreign player ever to become the Masters champion. He watched Palmer's unbelievable six on the 18th on television in the clubhouse. And now he walks back onto the green in victory, where only a short hour before he had left in defeat. At the presentation ceremony, he receives a standing ovation. And from last year's winner, Arnold Palmer, he accepts the most treasured symbol of golfing greatness, the Augusta Nationals green coat. The new Masters champion, Gary Player, moving into the spotlight of golfing greatness. And another Masters Tournament, the 25th, comes dramatically to a close.